Good morning. It's Monday, November 2nd, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, When Your Choice is the Lesser of Evils. And our scripture is 1 Peter chapter 2. For the Lord's sake, submit to all human authority, whether the king as head of state or the officials he has appointed. For the king has sent them to punish those who do wrong and to honor those who do right. It is God's will that your honorable lives should silence those ignorant people who make foolish accusations against you. For you are free, yet you are God's slaves. So don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil. Respect everyone and love the family of believers. Fear God and respect the king. Tomorrow is quote-unquote election day. Sounds odd to proclaim that. Probably more than half the voters in America have already cast their ballot, either in early voting or by mail-in ballot. The early voting line last Thursday was an hour long. My bride and I passed the time in the stiff winds under our masks, still talking about the choices we would make in the voting booth. Some are decidedly the lesser of evils. The Apostle Peter understood that condition. In his youth, the big fisherman was impetuous, idealistic, and brash. By the time he wrote the words of our text, he'd lived long enough and sinned big enough and been forgiven more than enough to get his mind around what a Christian's responsibility is when it comes to separating earthly authority from heavenly authority. You respect the king and honor God. I hoped I would get that right in this year's general election, mature enough to respect those currently governing and those running to replace them, all the while honoring God by my behavior and choices. Considering the vitriol and outright mudslinging of campaign ads, which Peter would call foolish accusations, well, it wasn't an easy fight. For me, the choices always come down to the candidate that comes the closest, and I realize that's a difficult word, but it's a good word here because we do not live in a perfect world. The candidate that comes closest to what Scripture proclaims is God's ways. Last Wednesday, I watched a video sent to me by a friend. It was Father Ed Meeks, a parish priest in Towson, Maryland, preaching about the non-negotiables of the Catholic Church, which candidate Joe Biden, a self-avowed lifelong Catholic, violates proudly. Biden is an enthusiastic supporter of abortion rights, disdaining church and U.S. constitutional teaching of the sanctity of life. He also leads a party that makes a mockery of the sanctity of marriage, even officiating the marriage of two men in 2016 as the sitting vice president of the United States. Father Meeks, in his homily of October 11th, also characterized Biden as a threat to religious liberty, also a non-negotiable teaching of the church. Allowing that many policies and philosophies of governing, such as economy, national security, and much more, are debatable and should be scrutinized, these three, sanctity of life, marriage, and religious freedom, are non-negotiable. Now on the other side of the ballot stands Mr. Trump. He's a personality that leaves little room for middle ground. People seem to either love or despise him profusely. But personality is trumped, (laughs) sorry, don't unfriend me, personality is trumped by ideology in the ballot booth. The choices become a lot clearer for those who commit their lives to Jesus Christ. The party to which Donald Trump belongs holds as sacred the sanctity of life, marriage, and free exercise of religion. And the president may have some tall explaining to do without spin on these issues in his personal life when Judgment Day arrives. But personality aside, the performance of his administration has tended to support the platform which protects those non-negotiables. On the other hand, Mr. Biden stands unabashedly with the Democratic Party which tends towards socialist Marxism, a system that cannot help itself from becoming totalitarian and, typically, an enemy of the church. Ironically, Mr. Biden belongs to both the church and the party. 
In the case of the church to which he proudly proclaims to belong, he also rejects their most sacred tenets, the sanctity of life, marriage, and religious freedom. This is more than having your cake and eating it too. It's duplicity of the most dangerous sort. I had little doubt standing in line last Thursday. I still don't. Just a measure of sadness over a choice between the lesser of evils. For you today, our elections are still free and without coercion. But what does compel for a child of God is the evidence generated over the last six decades of 61 million aborted children before they had a breath in their lungs and the downward spiral of honoring God with our choices. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.